What's up, beautiful people? This is Ryan from Leveling Up at Life. It's the end of January, and it's that time of the month where we just talk about finances really quick. I need to give you guys an update on where we are on our financial goals, as well as our net worth update. January was a very, very exciting month with a lot of great progress and a lot of big issues. This video just gives me a forum to give you guys some context about where we are with our financial goals, how we're doing, as well as give you a forum to talk about your finances as well. It also gives me a snapshot for in the future, when I'm looking back, I can see how January 2021 went and get an idea of some of the context that was going on, some of the things that were going through my head. But first, I want you to hit the like button. It pushes the video to a brand new audience and allows other people to get this information as soon as they can. I appreciate it and thank you so much. We're gonna jump directly into the video right now. We have assets. At the end of January, our investments were $46,600. And that's a split between the 401ks that we have and the IRAs that we have. Savings is a total of $40,550. And vehicles were about $7,800 between two cars. As far as the financial goals that we are also tracking toward, we have this slush fund for moving expenses completely set aside. So we were able to hit that goal ridiculously early and we just allocated that money in January. So now it's all earmarked towards that account. And as far as our house savings goal, we're on good track this month with the progress we were able to make in January to hit that goal by the mid section of this year. So somewhere in June or July of 2021, we should have the full amount of our house savings goal. As far as our Roth contributions, we are slightly behind somewhere in the range of $800 to $900, when it should be about $1,000 going in each month, $500 for me, $500 for Nicole, so that we can hit the maximum in the year. We are going to wait an additional month to see how January settles out and February settles out in order to make sure that we know what the contribution changes should be before we make any kind of major shifts to our contributions for the rest of this year. Then we're getting into liabilities. And we do not currently have any liabilities to speak of, and that is by choice. So we did make a video about our view and perspective on liabilities, which you can also check out on our channel. Feel free to subscribe while you're down there. Uh, that'll really give you a good idea of our perspective on liabilities. It's a super fast video, so I highly recommend it. But in this section, we do plan on taking out a mortgage in order to pay for the property that we're looking at getting. We will have this section populated with our mortgage amount and whatever type of other obligations that come along with that. Now let's hop over to our net worth summary. And this is going to be super easy only if you're paying attention. We have $94,950 in assets and $0 in liabilities. So our net worth is just the amount of the assets. We are this close to crossing that first six figure mark. And we're actually hoping to do that within about two months or so. Working for us this month, we saw about a 4% increase to our net worth overall this year. And it's pretty much on track in the next two months to hit six figures. And I'm pretty excited about it. I'm stoked about that first $100,000. We saw a couple of big swings in some of our investment accounts this month, which accounts for most of that growth this month so far, which is pretty exciting because now that money is starting to work for us on a much more visible level. I also wanted to touch on the past a little bit. In 2018, we had a negative net worth of $22,000. Dollars. And then in 2019, for the very first time, we crossed into the positive net worth as a couple. And after that, in 2020, we grew our net worth by over $40,000 in one single year. And now we are $50,000 ahead of that. We had a couple of major changes in January that contributed to this and a couple of that will take away. So in January, we decided to completely cancel the ski trip. We had absolutely no idea how expensive it is in order to start skiing when you have absolutely none of the specific clothes or equipment in order to do any of that. <laughs> it's ridiculously expensive to get started and no. We were not spending that much money on it. We did earmark that much money on it, so we were able to use that for other things this year, which kind of jumpstarted a couple of the other goals. But it also gave us a lot of room to make mistakes. This month, we spent a lot of money 
uh, in some categories that are not typical. Here are a couple of the big notes. We spent $1,100 on food this month. And just for a quick reference, that's about twice as much as we typically would ever spend on food. Part of that was a bunch of diet changes. Trying out new recipes with uh, fresher food, less processed food, different types of ingredients, and replacing a lot of food that we had in the house already. Another big part of that spending was we ate out at restaurants a lot. And a lot of those restaurants were house favorites, but some of them, tiny portion, was eating at a lot healthier places in order to try out different types of recipes so that we can take some of those back home and try and recreate those ourselves. As a replacement for the ski trip, we decided to try a bunch of different types of restaurants that we hadn't had before or some of our fan favorites in order to kind of replace the enjoyment from that mini vacation we were planning this whole time. We also decided to switch gyms in the month of January. Now, going and switching gyms whenever you've built a couple of friends and relationships at the previous one can be kind of awkward. But it's not nearly as awkward as not hitting the majority of your fitness goals because the supportive environment that you're looking for wasn't really at that gym. Acknowledging that last year wasn't perfect, we missed a couple of our fitness goals. Reasonably, a couple of those fitness goals were not physically possible during the pandemic, but also we fell off the horse pretty hard. We will have a fitness update in the future, so if you're interested in that type of video, you can go ahead and subscribe now, where we'll break down what those goals were and how close we got, because we did make significant progress towards those. So it's notable, it's just not the goal, but progress is progress. Also related to the gym, we made a big financial decision this month. We decided to go for a personal trainer in order to actually hit those goals. So it's a locked in period for about half a year where we're going to need to meet with this person at least once a week and perform additional exercises as homework in order to make sure we're making progress towards that goal. I think it's been really positive so far. We're halfway through February. We've hit all of our scheduled periods and we've only missed one exercise out of the entire time because we got snowed in so hard. But I think, uh, I think we're on a good track. We have a really good supportive environment to be able to hit those goals. And we have help, which I think is good to get that third party in every once in a while, because you know, me telling her what to do or her telling me what to do doesn't work out very well. And we'll talk about the details of that program that we're in right now in another video. But as far as financially, uh, personal trainers are not cheap. So this is a huge financial decision that we made in this month in order to hit the other types of goals that we think are worth the money. So we decided to do this and just so you guys know, it's like 200 bucks per month in order to have this personal trainer uh, meet with us at least one time a week, give us meal plans and give us uh, workout plans to follow. But overall in January with the gym cancellation, the new gym fees, the new gym fee, for monthly fee and the personal trainer, we spent about $400 in just gym related expenses, which completely hurts my heart. <laughs> we are reducing our overall monthly gym membership fee from 70 or $75 to about $40, which is a great reduction. But like I said, the $200 spent on personal training is more than going to offset the amount we save from getting a smaller gym fee. So we are intentionally choosing to spend more, at least for half the year, and we'll see how it goes after that. We also had a number of subscriptions that hit yearly. One of the new subscriptions that we decided to go with was Disney Plus because WandaVision, of course, because WandaVision. We also have The Mandalorian, which I need to catch up on, which I know I'm going to do this afternoon. We also dropped this ski trip, which we've already talked about, and we basically replaced all of that with eating out more. We have sinking funds, which have an expected goal at the, uh, at the very end of it. So once that sinking fund hits that certain goal, we don't save any additional money for that. We consider it to be fully funded. So the additional that would be going in towards that fund is no longer included and is now included in discretionary income, 
or to go to other financial goals that we're working on at the time. And now we're doing video games with friends over the interwebs. So that's exciting. But our sinking funds is really where a lot of the discretionary income came from this month. So our emergency fund, car expenses fund, and a number of other smaller funds are now fully funded, meaning we don't have to add additional money each month in order to hit a specific goal. February is going to be very interesting as well. First off, we're not going to eat out nearly as much as we did in January. I don't think that's going to be very hard because we're eating out multiple times every single week. So spending less than $1,100 is not the bar that we're looking to hit. We also have a goal in order to eat cleaner foods and cook more. So we're hoping to have additional funds left over in groceries, but we're going based off of our typical expenses currently. Like I said, we're going to have that personal trainer expense that we'll be doing uh, a workout with them weekly, and we'll also be adjusting our diet, which we've already talked about. Valentine's Day, we do plan on eating out. Shh, don't tell me. We'll also be getting an idea of what trips will look like this year. So with the pandemic and the current situation out there, we want to make sure that we're conscious of what's going on in whatever environment we go to, which means a lot more upfront research about what we can and can't do, going to certain types of certain states or certain types of environments. But it's, it's it takes a lot more planning to do anything nowadays. So we're going to be conscious of what's going on to make sure that we're responsible citizens. But, you know, we'll we'll plan out those so that we can put together funds and whatnot for those types of expenses so we'll see we'll see what we got as far as uh, planning vacations in the future if you want to see how all of that works out in the month of February you know what to do go ahead and hit the subscribe button to get all the updates and notifications about our fitness finance and family centered goals let me know in the comments down below what kind of questions you have about our finances and if you're going to be doing your own net worth feel free to let me know what kind of challenges you've seen so far i've been ryan you've been awesome thank you so much for watching bye